All right, people, I am officially back on the grid this week. And joining me to make some sense of the world that I missed is host of the aptly titled Philip DeFranco Show right here on the YouTube. Phil DeFranco. I love that I world. love that you've put that on me of trying to make sense of whatever the hell it is we're living in right now. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, you have a lot of pressure on you because I, I could have selected anybody for the beginning of season three. I'm back on the grid. I lost my razor. I'm trying to figure out what happened. And for some reason, I chose you. I'm loving this, though. I'm just yeah. jealous. I know I was saying it before, yeah. but I want to go on the record. I'm just very jealous of the facial hair. I, uh, I feel good about it. <laughs> maybe, maybe you could grow out a little something. Oh, no, yeah. I can grow out a little something. A little something. But it's not an actual something. Yeah, but you're a respectable guy, and you're, you're <laughs> doing videos every day. Mm -hmm. Do people want to see you change your look? I don't, I don't know what people want. <laughs> You've had a know. pretty consistent look over the years. Yes, I, all I do is I fluctuate 60 pounds depending on the stress <laughs> level of that time. Because I will say, I'm, I'm so glad the timing worked out, but I was still a little iffy on doing this because I know that side angle, and I don't like the way I look from the side, and that was like, that was the 50-50 coin flip of if I do this or not. That's hilarious. But I love you so much, I was like, yes. Well, so, okay, so there's a few things going on here. So one of the reasons I wanted to have you on was just to catch me up on some of the stuff. And I wanted it to be from somebody that I think is consistently trying to be honest and, and do good stuff. But you are an insanely busy person. We, it turned out that we live literally within walking distance of each yes. other, which is almost impossible in LA. <laughs> and yet we were trying to connect for like a year and it couldn't happen. When it finally did, you got in your car and realized that it was a half a second away. Well, yeah, when I was, kind of, I, I was, because uh, I, I never actually go on this specific street. Yeah. And so I, I got off the highway and I was like, oh, oh, what? <laughs> and for a second I thought I was getting like pranked. Right. I was like, okay, I'm just driving home. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's crazy. But that's also, I think that's very much LA. Like it doesn't matter where you, none of us like exist in the real world. We just, we're point A, point B, right? There's no in between. We got some people some normies walking around the neighborhood, being outside, living life. Walking not, dogs. Or you now for the past month, but yeah. yeah, I mean, for the most part, I'm in one place or another. Yeah, like and I'm, you are a busy guy because I, all I did for the last month when I was here, I was doing some writing and some gardening, but I was walking my dog a lot and I kept thinking, I'm gonna have to see him at some point because I'm walking around for hours aimlessly. Never. But it proves my point that you are, you're a busy guy. Yes, well, I'm you, trying to. You make to be. a lot of content. Yeah, well, the goal is to make more. Like, uh, I definitely, so right now, we put out across the two channels eight videos a week. Um, but the next, the big next step that we've been kind of building up to the launch of is a daily one hour live show. Um, just finding the right people to be involved. What I've done in the past has been more comedy first and then news was attached to it. For me now, the next step is, is news first and then make it relatable, make it funny. Um, but that's that's a second thing because I think people need to be informed uh, or at least informed of what other people are saying. Yeah. yeah. So as if you're not busy enough just with the show, you also have a second child due, I believe, in two days from right two now? Two days unless uh, your producer gets a phone call, in which case I will have to <laughs> hop out of this. For the record, I was willing to let you keep the phone in front of you. No, it's this, fine. Which we normally don't do, but you said no, no. No. If the baby's coming, the baby can wait. Wait, what? <laughs> I did you not said say Ruben anything. is very important. Uh, the, no, but your phone is in there in case something yes. happens, because it could happen. Yes. Why are, are you ready for a second one? Yeah, it'll be great. Uh, and it's also, it's an excuse to take a week off so that I can be home, try and make some normalcy in the, uh, you know, the, the beginning of the chaos. But I'm excited. Uh, but two and done. Two and done. No more. Don't want to be outnumbered. Two is great. Fair enough. So for people who don't know you. Yes. We're, I mean, I'm on YouTube too. Right but there might be somebody here that, that doesn't know you. Plenty, For the yeah. people that don't know you, what, what possessed you to start talking to the camera? The uh, being, really, re being really bored in, in college. Um, I've been on YouTube now for over 10 years. Anytime I mention who I used to watch back in the day, 1% of my audience knows who I'm talking about, but it was a lot of talking heads, and I think it's a, a lot of what people still feel today and why they jump into it. They see some people that maybe you're doing a good job, but they think they can do as good or they wanna be that great or they think they're garbage <laughs> do yeah. way better. Um, and, that's, and that's kind of how I jumped into it. And I wanted to talk about the news because I just wanted to talk to someone about everything that was happening, right? That's, it's, I'm, I've always been like a very, like a loner, kind of loser type, stuck to myself. 
Um, the closest I get to talking to someone, like I, I found myself trying to jump into things like Magic the Gathering cards, so I just had someone to talk to about something, um, because not a lot of people wanted to talk about news in, yeah. in high school, yeah. right? Um, so yeah, just really bored, really poor in college. Uh, started making videos, talking about current events, um, pretty much anything back in the day to chase the front page. Um, but it was, always, it was always news, it was always conversation. Um, but that's really it. When did you realize that it was actually like becoming something more than just like taking care of a little loneliness? I like to think that it's, it's right around the time that I dropped out of college uh, because I was at this point where my grades were starting to fail. Uh, I was realizing, I was blaming YouTube for it, but I was, my heart really just wasn't in it anymore. I had, for like seven years, my dad told me like, you're gonna be a doctor. And so I was in the pre-med program and I hated it. I hated it. My brain did not work for that skill set. Um, and, and then one day, right when I was about to, to quit YouTube, YouTube gave me a call and informed me about the partner program, right? Um, kind of, kind Wait, of like so it why, is. Why were you going to quit? You, oh, because you thought it was affecting your grades? So yes. you, and you were trying to. Yeah, well, at least, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, and then the moment I realized, and they said I was gonna make a lot more money than I initially was, mm -hmm. right? And so I was like, oh, well, screw this. Like, I, I'll just, I'll just focus on this. We'll, dr I'll drop out. It'll be fine. And it was not fine uh, initially. I had to, you know, just figure out a way to make it work for for several years. And then I think once I once I finally found myself in uh, California um, with uh, with some of like the old faces, uh, Shay Carl, Kasim G, uh, Danny Diamond, uh, to to start Maker. That's mm -hmm. the moment I think I realized, okay, this is this is like a real thing. This could be a real, real thing. It's not just me in a room by myself. This yeah. is this is the rise of something new. Do you look at that with a certain amount of nostalgia now? Like sort of like the good old days, like a little bit. no one kind of knew what was happening. You didn't realize whether this was gonna be a money thing or a career thing or what. And just everybody didn't have a handle on how big this all could be. I think for me it's it's never really so obviously the money is fantastic. The money yeah. is an enabler and I will I will not talk shit on money. Um, but for me, it is, it is really what we're putting out there, right? Yes, I put out, I put out vlogs, um, and that's like, it's supposed to be entertaining in some sense, give people behind the scenes of the personalities that are working on something. Um, but that's also just my attempt to, to reach out and talk to someone about something that's not news. The, the other bit, it's just, it's just, especially now, it's just so important to talk about what's happening because everyone's so confused and frustrated. Um, and so I'm, that's one of the reasons I left Maker early days. It was, it was business first, mm. everything else second, right? Um, my bank account would look slightly different, but I'm so glad personally as far as uh, the work and what I'm doing that I, I decided that I wanna do it my way. That every move that I've done, while money might have been a part of it, that it's always been about what is the end result of the content we could make or what we wanna make. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes some of, the, some of those things did not fully get fleshed out. Um, but it's why I'm still doing it 10 years out and I don't have to. It's because I really love this and I really care about it. Yeah, and you've had some business ups and downs and bumps yes. and bruises along the way and you just kind of kept doing it. And now you're fully independent, which yes. just from everything you just said, I mean, it's like it's sort of like the greatest thing that you can have as a creator, right? It, so it's the best thing in the world to be independent, but you also lose one thing, uh -oh. right? What's and that that's thing? the ability to blame someone else, right? <laughs> um, I don't like to blame anyone that's underneath me because their mistake is my mistake, mm -hmm. right? You put people in control and that's ultimately, like, that's you. The net result is you. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't get to do that anymore. Uh, but the upside <laughs> is the 99%, uh, that's great. Yeah, how much do you find that having the business part of this and being the, the head of the company and all that, um, do you like that or do you find that to be, that it takes you away from the stuff that you really care about, that creating that content? Right, at times, I, uh, especially when I initially launched and we were setting everything up and you get into the kind of like that, okay, this is, I'm remembering what it was like to be back in college and, and staying at Panera Bread for way too long and I was like doing everything yeah. myself um, and being on every phone call and there's a point where that's a rush and then at about a year, a month and a half, it's like, okay, so I'm ready for, I'm ready for this new step. And so like, that's even something, we're still growing, right? So um, right now, one of our newest hires is gonna be uh, our new CEO, COO, yeah, COO. Um, someone that can just make sure that everything's working as intended, grows the company for us while I'm in, hopefully, the more creative sessions.
Yeah. Um, where do you want to go with all this? Like, what's the, now that you're independent and I see it just, it's just grown and grown and grown, and I think you've hit something that's very sort of similar to what I've tried to build around here, which is just, like it really, I think the secret is just basic decency. Like when I watch your videos, you strike me as fundamentally decent. And I feel like that's just kind of, yes, and you also, and you have a commitment to the truth and you actually are trying right. to hear both sides and, and all that stuff. But I think underlying that is just kind of like a decency. Yeah, I think the, the, one of the biggest things um, that I've always found, and it's something my, my dad taught me uh, when I was a kid, um, is even when you're disagreeing with someone, try it. Try your best, even no matter how you, how much you disagree with them, uh, and 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 everything that they're saying. Give them, leave them with a door open, right? To save some face, to to maybe realize that part of what they were thinking there is a misstep there. Uh, because when you put someone in a corner, all they all you're all you're really confirming, or, is, or all you're really doing is locking them down in their belief, right? I, I've been there, right? When. In, in the past, if I've been talking to someone and they hit me with something that proves like something I previously thought was wrong, it almost feels like I'm, I'm, being, I'm being like attacked yeah. or like I'm being told I'm stupid and it's not a great feeling. So when you're arguing with someone, right, if the real intent is, is to, to, to hopefully promote truth, right, hopefully promote um, <laughs> the, the right thought, uh, hopefully then you're leaving the door open for them. So you're saying that not screaming at everybody that they're a racist and a bigot and all that, that, that might not work? Is but we're it? all guilty of it. Yeah. When I see you, or sometimes I say something about like the left, right? Absolutely. And it's Ab easy to talk in generalities, right? Sometimes you have to talk in generalities uh, on certain subjects, but sometimes we get a little swept away mm -hmm. with it and we end up causing the same problems that we say that we're fighting against. Yeah. Um, I, I find it, and what sucks is we're doing it openly on the internet in this, in this grand experiment, so every time you falter, everyone sees it. Right, and more importantly, you see it, and it's just there. And yeah. so, hopefully, you don't do that thing that I just said, where, where we then just lock down, and we're like, well, no, it does, it, I'm I'm different for some reason that we grow from it. It's hard, it's painful, but I think you just have to keep trying. You're gonna fail a lot, but keep trying. Yeah, and we all make these mistakes, and it's interesting. I don't remember what the specific instance was, but you did a video on I think, I think it had mm. something to do with a terror attack or something. And I jumped the gun on on either the name of the guy. Or right. I, I don't remember the specifics. If you do, mm -hmm. feel free to say it. But, but I liked the fact that you you said I like Dave Rubin. He, you know, screwed this one up or whatever you said. And I actually liked it because I was like, a I did do it. You didn't accuse me of doing something that I didn't right. do. I, I screwed up something. I did correct it once I found out. But. But often when you correct things, that gets much less traction than the, than the original thing. Right. That's a whole other problem of social media and all that. But I thought your intention wasn't to mock me. You were showing that even people that you like right. screw up sometimes. And I feel like everyone always wants to pretend that they're so infallible and it's just, it's well, just silly. And it's important. I think it's important that people know that we are all infallible, but also that if we're going to point out all the flaws of mainstream media, that we don't then just repeat the same mistakes that we're criticizing, right? Um, they're not perfect. I think the reason a lot of people get angry is there are people in the industry that see themselves as higher, mm -hmm. right? You see it every time there's, there's someone that writes about a, a YouTuber in a very disrespectful light, like we're all just nothing, yeah. right? We're this, like, this fad, even though this is the, 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 like the swing of the new normal. Um, right, even if, if CNN had the numbers that you had, they'd be thrilled. I mean, if you shut CNN off at airports, whatever their numbers would be, Bill DeFranco's doing a lot of I'd that. be interested. It'd be I, pretty uh, damn close, let's put it that way. I think, I mean, I think most, a lot of the, the up-and-comers definitely beat the, the mainstream outlets as far as the 18 to 35. As far as full numbers, I don't know. You're talking about an international company. I like to puff my chest up every now and then and talk numbers. <laughs> I was giving you a little something there. I know, <laughs> I know, but I always have to like bring myself down a Well, little. at least in terms of the influence that I see, from, mm. from what I can garner online and what the conversations are about and people that are talking about the right things, if I was to watch 10 minutes of one of your videos on what happened in the world versus watching 10 minutes of, of CNN, say, doing another poll about Trump, it's like I actually learn a lot more. So you have a certain amount of 
by, by doing good work, you've now put yourself in a position where there's a lot of pressure on you to keep, <laughs> keep doing good work. Yeah, I, the, the time I feel the most pressure is anytime I meet people, like I go to an event or for some reason I'm in a public setting for, <laughs> for once in a long time and yeah. people are like, you're the only person I watch, which one, I will always say, please watch more, <laughs> right? Please take in yeah. more sources. But then like that makes me feel so horrible about off days where I'm like, you know what? I got two hours of sleep again. I was like, we're gonna try and do like an eight minute show. And it's, it's a day that I personally feel like I let people down, even no matter what the numbers are online. I personally feel it. Um, what but, does that tell you about the, the state of things, that people say that kind of thing to you? Well, I think it's like we were, say, we were saying earlier, that people don't know where to go, or they just want, they do want a voice to bounce off of, uh, but they, they want a voice that they can only also respect, that they don't see themselves as always right. Um, but I also think that by only posting, like only posting 10 to 18 minutes a day as a main show, I have an advantage over the mainstream outlets who do have to do 24 hours, right? So it's the reason why you have CNN talking, it's, it's talking about that, like a plane crash for weeks and weeks and weeks to the point where you have someone talking about the theory that the plane went into a black hole, right? Yeah. Um, I don't have to, <laughs> we're not that desperate that right. we're, we're taking crazy ass You were questions. like, yeah, that maybe would be in the 19th minute. But, you know, yeah, yeah that's, that's what happens when it extends. Yeah, what do you make of the, just the general situation on YouTube right now? There, there's a lot of people very frustrated with YouTube from creators to people watching, people are feeling, you know, this whole demonetization thing, which you've done a bunch of videos mm -hmm. on. There's a feeling that there's some censorship being involved. Uh, happening right now. I don't know if you noticed this one. I mentioned it on my live stream earlier that we now have videos, uh, you know, for this month that I was gone, we had videos in our back end that were not tagged, not titled. They had no metadata attached to them and they were demonetized. Yeah, that's something that we noticed specifically on our v our vlog channel. Like really? We, not on the Philip DeFranco show, which was very strange. We had a video where we were just standing around talking, auto flagged. We, so, change, we change the information multiple times. I mean, this is like, it's not a unique story. It's, it's so weird and confusing, and I don't get it. Do you have any contact with the YouTube people? I had so much, I mean, it took me literally two years to finally, I, I did the one work thing I did last month. Right. I got one phone call with them, and I got no answers. I, again, uh, I put this on YouTube, I want this to work, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not sitting here so we can just talk shit about them. Like, I want it to be a better product right. because this is how we get our stuff yeah, out. Yeah, we criticize the things we love because yeah. we want it to be better. Yeah. I totally get that. No, I've had, so I've had the same contact at YouTube uh, for about seven years. Um, when you said that they were gonna potentially offer someone from their PR department to talk, I was like, who is that? Yeah, well, they because, didn't give me a name. Oh, yeah, well, no because I have a person um, and I talk to them, I get information from them, a lot of it ends up being stuff that they haven't cleared to be on the record. Mm -hmm. So if you get a source <laughs> that yeah. is willing to talk publicly, yeah. uh, that'd be great. Because otherwise, all we get are people having to talk to their partners, and then YouTube uploading some video they don't realize is condescending, uh, and everyone gets angry, Yeah. Right? Well, you know, we had this back and forth going on with them, because people kept telling us they were being unsubscribed from our channel, and we saw the growth just didn't make sense. And we got an email from someone there saying, yes, there is a bug on your channel, we're looking into it. And then like the next day, they put up that video, remember that like six months ago, those two like no, kids being it. like, no, it's never happened before, we have no evidence. Well, that's that a great question. And it's like, <laughs> well guys, somebody, you know. It's it's so frustrating, yeah. it's so frustrating. Some, sometimes it, it's, it's easy for it to feel so personal. Um, but I think that there's so many moving pieces. There are times where people don't realize things. I, I've talked about certain things on the show and then talked to people at YouTube and they're like, we didn't know that was a thing on, on the site, that there was a problem. Yeah. Um, and so I try, I try whenever I can to, to also message them before I cover a story, mm -hmm. not to give them a heads up, but just to go like, if there is some, like an explanation, I'd love, I'd love to be able to include it. Yeah. But it is so frustrating, especially because for most people it's, most of their income, right? Because they haven't diversified or they haven't, I saw your new shirts uh, yeah, focusing yeah, on yeah, merch yeah. Um, or having some sort of alternate um, thing. And I mean, the good end is if you have a good product, then you can use that as a way to then convert audience mm -hmm. that really care about the content. But otherwise, like you're just, right now you're just fucked. Yeah, well that's why I think, and that's why I asked you the question about the business side and how much you put into that versus the creation. Because I think for me, it's actually by doing this, and as you know, you're in my, this was my garage, it's mm -hmm. now a studio, like 
the things that I talk about on the show, I've been able to put into practice. The beliefs that I have, I've been able to put into practice into the business. So it's more like the more that these, if YouTube closes a door on me on this or whatever, it's like, yeah, in life, you just gotta be smart and go where the next thing is. Right. Or, or else, do you care wh how people watch or where people watch? No, or, it's or a, any of that stuff? well, especially thanks to like uh, the Patreon and the Franco Elite, I don't care, right? No. If, they, if they watch, we're gonna start maybe uploading smaller videos to Twitter as well, just to get the most traction everywhere. Um, but if you're watching on Facebook, awesome. If you're watching on YouTube, great. If we then jump to another platform, fantastic. I always treat my videos like a shiny thing, or like keys, right? And just, I, I wanna leave those things everywhere. So no matter where you turn, it's right there. I don't know about your numbers because it's longer form, yeah. but most of my views are now mobile. Mobile or iPad or, Every now and then, it's like there's like a there's been a jump for like Xboxes and smart TVs, mm -hmm. but the like the numbers for computer are at an all time low. Yeah, do you think an offer could be made to you that would uh, swipe you up and no. take you to no? No, no. we were uh, we were having a conversation recently, um, and I was trying to explain why I couldn't do uh, certain things and why I would never sell again and. When people hear that, they hear something that's emotional, mm -hmm. right? They hear something that's like, never again. It was. It, it's not like I'm suffering from from some sort of thing. It's just, I don't like the feeling of not being in control, right? So you could say, okay, well that means just hold on to 51%. Mm -hmm. But I have a different mindset about it because with this launch, so much of it was fan funded, right? And I'd feel like I'm giving that to someone else rather than putting it into the content. There are justifications where you could say, well, by getting this person, it affects the content. Maybe maybe I'll evolve on that. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, but no, never, never again. Do you ever have a moment where you think, oh, I could say this thing or cover this topic that could actually, now half my patrons might be pissed at me or, no. or leave or anything like that? No, I think that's one of the benefits of, of trying to cover everything is honestly and, and try and try and convey other people's points of view is that, I mean, every video, I'm offending someone, yeah. right? And, and, that, and that's like, it's strange to hear for some people because there are people that are like, Phil has never had like a, an opinion that people disagreed with, which is an insane thing to say, yeah. right? That's like going, well, everyone thinks this one thing. I've made people angry and that's fine. My hope is that I've formed a relationship with people where it's, where it's okay to do that, that I'm your friend or that person that you, you're friendly with, that you talk about stuff with, that you don't necessarily agree with. Um, that's, that's my goal. And what's kind of great about that is, yes, I'll always be shedding like some subscribers, I'll always be shedding some, some patrons, but if I'm doing an effective job, I'll continue to grow over time. Yeah. Um, and, so, and so that's, if anything, it's made me feel more comfortable that there were that number of people that, that, were, that were supportive enough to go like, I might disagree with you, but let's do this. Yeah, isn't that so? also the beauty of fan funding in general, right. whether you're doing it on Patreon or anything else, it's like, if I wanted to sell out to my audience or whatever that is, I, would, I truly, I would not even know which way that meant. Well, you know so I was I mean? gonna because say, I don't say, know. Well, I was gonna say, when you say sell out, what's your mindset? Because a lot of people have a different mindset around it. Does that I, mean no, no sponsors? Does that mean? No, I, I mean, look, we have sponsors on our right. audio podcast, which by the way, we didn't do for three years almost, right. and we finally did to make up some of the YouTube stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we only accept ones that I think are actually, you know, worth, worth accepting. Right. Um, but at this point, I, I feel very much what you said there. I own and control and operate my own business the way that I want to. It's successful, it's growing, all of those things. I don't know what package could ever be put together. Yeah, I could make more money, but I, I'm not in it for that. Like, I'm doing all right. So it's right. like, I don't know that something could supersede that beautiful thing that we have, you know? Yeah. It's I, like what every artist is fighting for all the time in the history of the world. And, and we have it for, you know, hopefully more than a brief moment. It's beautiful. Yes, I, I have nothing, everything you said is exactly <laughs> what I'm thinking.